Welcome to Mod Sales Camp. I'm Bob Kimball, and this is Mod 2. Manage your time, manage your life. Yeah, on this one, we're going to say for y'all, um, very important assignment here. Do a serious personal assessment. Yeah, do it. First, identify all your strengths, your strong points, um, your innate gifts. Now on this, keep in mind, what are your strong points may be the things you can build on. Um, like for instance, let's just say that you're really good at, at computers and analytics. You may be able to expand that for better computer expertise. It's entirely possible. Um, physically, you may be in pretty good shape. You run three miles every day. Well, why not challenge yourself to do a marathon? You may feel that you've got a pretty good strength with um, personal relationship skills, but maybe you can improve on that. With your, your family, your work, in the community, something like that. So don't do this in one little setting. We're talking about a week to do this. Go back and touch on it a couple times a day. Look at what are your strengths, the things that you can really build on here. Having done that, then your weaknesses, your demons, we all got them, people. There's the obvious ones, alcohol, drugs, sex. Um, <clears throat> you gotta deal with them. But there's also the more subtle ones, especially in our world today. Let's uh, ask yourself a question. Spend your time doing this. How much time are you spending every day on social media? Measure it up. Then raise the question. How much time should you be spending on social media? Um, Manage it, do it. Um, another question here. How many times a day are you checking your phone? It's actually amazing. There's a number of people who are checking their phone 80 and 100 times a day. Keep a count. See exactly how many times a day you're checking your phone. And then decide, how many times a day should you be checking your phone? You may come down and say, I can check it first thing in the morning before lunch, mid-afternoon and early in the evening. You figure that one out. Um, the fact of the matter is, social media, telephones today, these things have become as addictive as cocaine. Confront them. They are preventing you from achieving great things. I have to confess myself on this one too. A few years back, uh, I all of a sudden had to confront myself that I was watching four hours of news every evening during the week. I'd start off with Wolf Blitzer's Situation Room. Then I'd do the local news, muting most of it except for the weather forecast. Then the NBC Nightly News, um, the PBS News Hour, and Keith Olbermann. And I finally got to say one day, what am I doing? Four hours a day. I could probably spend that a whole lot better. Um, now I'm proud to say it has now been four years since I've watched any TV at all. None. Don't even miss it. I do check the news online um, about once a week. That's enough. It lets me know what I'm doing. So it leaves me free to get stuff done. Having figured out, first of all, what are your strengths? What are your demons, your weaknesses, and stuff like this? <clears throat> now, get organized and get to work. Remember, you get paid for results, not just working hard. <clears throat> it's results. And so, again, urge you in the strongest terms. Every Friday afternoon, last thing you do for the day of Friday, sit down and lay out your weekly plan for the next week and seven tentative daily plans. <clears throat> Here's the thing on this. You need to do it Friday afternoon because it may well be there are things that need to be addressed Saturday and Sunday. You can't wait till Monday morning because then the bell rings. So go through that and do your seven tentative daily plans. Quick note like this, however. Like a battle plan, uh, the plan lasts only until the first shot is fired. So on your daily plans, you may well find after a day, you're gonna come to realize, okay, I gotta modify this a little bit. Fine, so what? <clears throat> after day one, modify your daily plans accordingly. Now, let's now take this to the next step. A couple of things to make your plans even more successful. First of all, people are different. We don't just have a set way to go sell to everybody. No, they think differently. They buy in different 
ways for different reasons. So this is part of being much more efficient to focus appropriately on this. Wouldn't it be great if we could find a really simple way to figure out how to evaluate people and how to sell to them? Yeah, we can do this by assessing their buyer behavior style. It's really simple, people. We do this by noting two traits which are readily observed. <clears throat> their assertiveness from high to low. That's on the horizontal scale. And then their priorities from relationships to tasks. Put this thing on a two by two matrix. The horizontal is your assertiveness to the right to high, the left to low. On the vertical is the priorities. On the upper end is relationships. On the bottom end, tasks. Now, what we're going to do here today is we're going to see that we're going to be able to take listening to a whole different level because people you need to listen with your eyes as well as your ears. So the upper left corner, <clears throat> low assertiveness, focus on relationships. Those are the amiables. So let's look at their office area. Yes, check out the office area when you walk in. Look around how the place looks, how they seem to conduct themselves because people are communicating this to you and you can make use of it in the office of an amiable. There's going to be lots of pictures, mementos, um, family friend stuff like that. Lots of this friendly personal stuff and open seating, never a barrier between you and them. You want to sell them? Go slow. Don't push to try to close a quick sale <clears throat> and focus on personal feelings and interests. <clears throat> Here's the thing. This can be kind of tough to do at times. I got to confess that one of the things in selling sometimes is to fake sincerity. We had a staff person in our office, um, a fine woman, really great, great employee, very loyal, stuff like this, consummate amiable, stuff like this. And every time I come in there, she wants to meet, show me pictures of her granddaughter and all that stuff like this. And so I fake the sincerity, oh, the, 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 how wonderful that kid is and stuff like that. But she did have to correct me one day and say, Please, Bob, I wish you'd refer to my granddaughter as she instead of it. Well, I figured that out. Sorry about that one here. Um, and here's the thing to know. A lot of the users and your staff are amiables. So make a connection with them. They can influence your ability to wind up getting this sale overall. Now, the upper right, high assertiveness, focus on relationships. That's your expressive. Their office area. Disorganized, cluttered desk, awards, motivational slogans on the wall. Hey, take a note of that thing and be able to say to them, hey, son of a gun, you won the salesperson of the year award three times in a row? They've got them on the wall because they love to be recognized for that. Recognize their achievements. They're posting them like that. They're giving you that opportunity. Here's the thing with them. Um, just like with the animals, their seating will facilitate contact. No barrier between you and them. They're going to want to talk to you. <clears throat> to sell them, hey, be alive. Be entertaining and fast moving. But here's the key to selling the expressive. These people are dreamers. They live in a dream. You want to sell them? Get them talking about their dreams. Get them talking about what they really want to do and where they really want to go. And then how can you be a part of them? So you can say to them <clears throat> at a certain point, son of a gun. What you're talking about here, I think we can help you do that. Yeah, that's the way to go with that. Now, bottom left, <clears throat> low assertiveness, focus on tasks, that's the analytic. Now, their office, very different. <clears throat> very structured, organized, functional, job-related, charts, graphs, spreadsheets, and them. Very formal seating, non-contact. They'll put a barrier between you and them. A very formal greeting. Um, good morning, Mr. Kimball. Uh, very pleased to see you. Would you have a seat, please? Just like that. Now, to sell them, this is a whole different game. Remember, their focus is tasks, not relationships so much. So have all your facts. Make sure they're right. <clears throat> no wrong facts. No typos, even, for them. Um, and give them alternatives that show respective advantages and disadvantages. You're not going to close an analytic on day one. They're going to analyze it. Fine. You may sit down with them and provide them five alternatives with the advantages and disadvantages of each. Okay, fine. 
So I plan to get together in a week. So you can narrow it down to three. Fine. Get down a week later, <clears throat> get down to two. Then narrow it down to one. But they're going to have to analyze it and go through it very, very easily and slowly. Keep that in that mind. Um, and so when you're doing this with them, keep in mind, stick to the facts and the details, um, not a personal friendship with them. Now, the bottom right, the high assertiveness focus on tasks, there's a fun one. There's the driver. There's the trumps out there. On their office area, a whole bunch of projects, materials, and work on their desk. Um, their decorations suggest power and control. So you walk in there, and it's sort of like it's almost overwhelming. Wow, ooh, that's exactly what their plan is, to make you feel that you're a little overwhelmed out there. Again, non-contact seating for them, but positioned for power on this. They may well have their desk positioned in a way that's like a foot or two above the floor itself. So they're looking down at you all the time. Okay, that's, that's what they're doing. Understand, it's a game. They're playing the game with you. So they're gonna hit you with a whole bunch of intimidating statements. Fine, expect that. Respond to them with neutral statements or clarifying questions. Don't get in a fight with them, arguing back and forth. That's a no-win for you. Um, and on something like that, they're just saying, uh, on the thing, well, you're gonna have to do this. We, you're, you're, we have another firm that can do this for us there. And you can sort of sit back and say, let me make sure I understand this. You need, you're telling me that you need someone to do A and B, but also C? Notice what I just did there with my, the way I phrase that. I raise my voice at the end of the sentence, which turns it into a question. A and B, but also C? Makes it a question. So they're saying, yeah, that's what we want. But notice also the phrase I use. So you're telling me, there's the key. I make sure that they're telling me, and I'm just confirming what they're telling me overall here. So that's the point of it. Let them discover the truth for themselves, have them think it was their idea. <clears throat> here in Pensacola, this is amazing. You have so many of these retired military out here, and they are a lot of them consummate drivers they just, oh, son of a gun, they just attack. Okay, you play the game. But what's also fascinating about this, when I see these retired military drivers, their wife is invariably inamiable. Son of a gun. Is she a masochist? No. Who really controls things in that family? She does. Because she has this game all the time of letting him talk, <clears throat> helping him to think it's his idea and proceed from that. Um, one of the people I have the greatest respect for from the 20th century was Ronald Reagan. Where would Ronald Reagan have been without Nancy? Without Nancy, Ronald Reagan probably would have peaked out as president of the Screen Actors Guild and all that. Nancy was the power behind him, and Reagan was no driver. He was good expressing overall, like this thing here. So keep in mind with this, Help them to buy, but don't confront them. One last thing here. <clears throat> Let's say that you're a store that uh, features top quality patio furniture. Son of a gun, you got the quality stuff here. The chaises, uh, normally $190, but this week they're on sale at $150. Uh, chairs, <clears throat> $100 normally, but this week they're $80. <clears throat> but here's the thing, top quality stuff. Cut straps, the, the tubing, everything, top quality. It's gonna, it's gonna be good for 15 years. So someone goes in there and comes in there to, to walk up to you and says, how much is the shades? Here's the thing. You got a very high price item. Don't look like you're apologizing about it. Don't say, well, it's, it, it's $150. No, $150. You're going to save $40 this week because it's on sale. It's like if you were going into a car dealership or a Mercedes dealership and you were asked him, what's the price for this car? They ain't going to sit around and meekly, well, the price is no, they ain't going to do that. They're going to stand up and just say, um, here's what the price is and let you, and let you go from there. Um, so you say what the price is, their reaction is, that's insane. That is crazy. I was just at Walmart. They get chaises for 10 bucks and the chairs are seven. Um, and, and you say, well, perhaps they do, but they're certainly not the same quality as we've got here. Uh, totally different like that. Um, 
And in fact, what's a thing? You have to replace that Walmart furniture every year. This stuff here is going to go 15 years for you. And the person isn't hearing you, but stands up, that is no inconvenience at all. Um, I'm going to be going to Walmart anyhow. This little thing, we're going here. You're getting hammered. You don't seem to be getting any place. But keep them talking. Because very likely, they're going to give you a cue to what it may take to make the sale. So you say, it's no problem to disposing of... Uh, of all my old Walmart furniture once a year, that's over. I just bought an $800,000 house in pace. But let me tell you, I can take those old Walmart chairs and chaises, put them down at the end of the driveway, someone will pick them up in 20 minutes. Oh, they just made a point of telling you that they just bought an $800,000 house. Um, that seems to me a person who wants to kind of brag on what they've done. I'm willing to bet they're not wearing a $30 Timex. We'll live on that thing here. But that gives you a little cue as to how they think. And the fact that they do buy high price things, don't they? Now, you can say to them uh, on this thing here, well, maybe it's not an inconvenience, but over 15 years, it won't cost you more. Because otherwise, at Walmart, you have to buy the new furniture every single year. The way it adds up, at the end of 15 years, you spend as much or a little more on that Walmart furniture than you would for our top quality stuff. And the person, again, hammers you. Don't hand me that crap all up. Um, I happen to know something about the time value of money. I'm a stockbroker. And I can take the money I spend as Walmart furniture, put it into an S&P 500 index account. And on the interest and dividends every year, I can buy new furniture at Walmart and never have to touch my principal. Oh, now they're hammering you. So it appears. But again, you've got them talking. They're communicating something. Stockbroker, huh? $800,000 home. But I want to clarify that. So you, you have this furniture around a pool in your home? Yeah. Well, um, you'd probably be entertaining a lot of customers and prospects, would you? At, at your home? Yeah, we'd be doing that. And just say... Well, let's kind of think about that. Instead of buying an $800,000 home, you probably could have gotten a trailer in Century for $30,000. Probably could have. But you bought the $800,000 home because of the return on investment. This, too, is a return on investment. When you have clients and prospects that come into your home and they see that really nice home and the really nice furniture, they are probably impressed by the fact that you must really know what you're doing to have nice things like that. And they might be a little more inclined, very subtly, but a little more inclined to decide to do business with you. So really, don't get fighting it out about the price of this thing. Look at the fact of the intangible. We're going to get to this more in the future sales camps as well. We're selling the intangibles. This can help build your business, even if it costs more, fine. It builds your business on this thing here. So this is really taking listening to a whole different level. Um, and this is something we want to make a point of doing, even though we seem to get hammered. We're picking up information. We can use it. Well, that's mod two. Manage your time, manage your life. And this is Bob Sales Camp.